Hello, fellow sufferers. I'm Lethe, and this is Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. This is being posted on FWAP's channel to get you used to my dulcet tones and sterling personality. Because in January 2016, FWAP and I are uh, launching a collaborative channel on YouTube called Bleak House. We will both be featured in content on that channel, and in addition to that, we will also each be launching new channels of our own. Mine, of course, being Lethe. On my channel, in addition to things like Diablo 3, I will play a lot of RPGs. I'm going to play some older RPGs at first. Uh, I'm going to have a series called The River Lethe, in which we play sort of forgotten or older games like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines and Alpha Protocol, which are two of my favorite RPG games of all time. I will play other sorts of games as well, and I will also play newer games as they come along. On the collaborative channel, FWAP and I will play some things together, RTSs, FPSs, and maybe even some MOBAs. Beyond gameplay, we will also be offering reviews of not just video games, but also sci-fi and fantasy movies, books, and that sort of thing. Along the way, if there's any other sort of content we think up, we'll put it up there for you to watch as well. For the time being, however, let's focus on Diablo 3. So you can see here I have a big, scary, really cool looking barbarian uh, called Balder. We're not going to be playing any of my existing characters because that's probably not as fun for you. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to play, from the beginning, a hardcore seasonal character. I've played a hardcore character before, long, long ago, before there were seasons in Diablo. Uh, but I haven't done one since then, and so I think the experience will be much different, and quite challenging. So, let me just show you some of my other roster of characters, just to give you a sense that I do play this game pretty frequently. In this season, Season 4, I have gotten one of each character type up to level 70, and in addition to that, gotten 366 Paragon levels. Now, I am by no means a top-tier player. Uh, I don't know the perfect builds for doing things. I tend to make builds uh, in an organic fashion, which is to say I do what I can with what drops for me. And I also like to constrict myself in, uh, restrict myself in sort of uh, thematic bounds as well. So I will never have, for instance, a witch doctor running around with a two-handed sword. I like to use the items which are specific to that class, and I know that that will drive some people crazy because it's not min-maxing, but I just like to have fun. And you can still do pretty well, you can perform pretty highly even with that strategy. So for instance, you see I have my Barbarian here up to Torment 8, and he's got a pretty good set of gear. That's Balder. My Season 4 Crusader is Wesran, who the Emperor would be proud of him. Look at these shoulder pads. Look at those skulls. He is definitely uh, a servant of the Emperor. Here we have Grigori, probably my lowest performing Season 4 character, my monk. You can see that his gear is not awesome looking. It's a bit hodgepodge. That's because I got him up to 70 in, you can see, six hours, almost seven hours, and then I was pretty much done with him. It's not that my that Monk is my least favorite uh, D3 class, it's just that, you know, I wasn't having... I, I think I was a little bit burned out when I got to doing the Monk. Subutai is my Season 4 wizard. He's primarily Meteor Talrasha build going on here, and he's got some funky clothes. He can't see what he's doing, but it doesn't matter. The meteors fall of their own accord. My Season 4 Demon Hunter is Elspeth. Demon Hunter is my least favorite class in Diablo 3. I'm not saying that it's objectively bad, I'm just saying I don't like to play it. So uh, don't get up in arms, and don't tell me that I'm wrong and that is in fact the most powerful class. That may well be, but I just don't like to play it. Um, and finally, we have... Samedi, my Season 4 Witch Doctor. He was the first seasonal character in Season 4 that I played, so he did all of the grunt work. He got to level 70, he unlocked the possibility of Paragon levels, he upgraded all of the artisans, and upon his back the others stood and progressed. So, as I said, 
We're not here to focus on my previous achievements. We are here to do new achievements. And to that end, we are going to create a new character. We are going to create a hardcore seasonal character. So you can see that these are two different play modes. Hardcore is the play mode, which uh, means that when you die, for the first time, you are dead forever. You remain a sticky red paste on the floor of some dungeon for uh, a carrion crawler or whatever to come and, and scarf up. On the other hand, seasonal heroes, uh, seasonal play mode is the sort of um, rolling reset uh, play mode that Blizzard has introduced in the past year or so, in which at the beginning you start over with new characters at level one, you start over with your artisans, you start over with your items, and you play anew. Why? Well, there are new achievements, there are new events, there are new items to get, and there are um, uh, lots of other uh, new content uh, that goes along that are rolled out in each season. So it may be that season, or excuse me, patch 2.4 rolls out with season 5. Uh, but we're not going to talk about the patches right now, we're going to try and get right into some gameplay. So. Uh, who are we going to play for a hardcore seasonal character? Well, because uh, I haven't done a hardcore character in a while, we're going to play a little bit safe. We're going to stick with one of the melee classes, because they have 20% damage reduction overall. I've just finished playing a Barbarian. That was the last Season 4 character that I got up to the level cap, uh, so I'm not really enthused about doing that, so it's between Crusader and Monk. I think I'm going to go for the Monk, because the monk uh, has lots of, you know, escapes and mobility, and I think that will be quite helpful in saving my life in season, uh, hardcore play. So we're going to check the two boxes here. We're going to name our character. We're going to give our character a little bit of a novelty name here. We're going to call her Nietzsche. So uh, just to let you know, I am a, uh, a philosophy instructor, a philosophy professor. So that's why I've chosen this name. And also, it's not because I am enamored of Nietzsche, it's because this character is going to go straight for excellence. This character doesn't care about what other people are doing and how they're doing it. She's not gonna go into story mode, no. She has a will to power level, and we're going to go into bounties and adventures. Uh, I would apologize for that bad pun, but really, I don't care, you deserve it. So, she's starting off with rags. I imagine it's a little bit cold out on these misty moors. Uh, so, our first order of business will be to get her some uh, reasonably warm gear. Uh, we're not going to go into Act 1. We're going to go into Bounties and Adventures. We're not going to start on Normal because that is for quitters. We're going to start on Hard. Really, hard should be, or what hard is, should be the baseline difficulty, because normal, I found, is just way too easy. Now, in hard mode, in hardcore, we will not be in danger all the time, but when we run into blue packs and unique enemies, then we will have to be on our guard, because things can go wrong very quickly. Getting surrounded and being outnumbered are extremely dangerous in hardcore mode. Because, remember, when you die, you are straight up dead forever. Now, as you can see, when you start a hardcore character, you start all over. You don't have your artisans. You don't have your Kanai's cube. Your hirelings are, you know, back to the basics. And your stash is empty. All you have are the minimal clothes on your back. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with some bounties. We're going to get some gold, we're going to get some XP, and once we've got a good set of gear going, then we'll move into Rifts. Um, these clear bounties are really my least favorite of all. Um, that's why I'm always happy when they add new bounty types. Uh, my favorite are like these kill so-and-so ones, and the uh, ones where you have to deal with the cursed chests or cursed shrines. Um, we're going to live life dangerously and we're going to go straight for the butcher. Hopefully that is not a terrible idea and we don't end this video series very prematurely. So we start off with very little. Oh, and we have gotten straight into some trouble with a blue pack. So when you think about these blue packs, uh, some abilities are worse 
more deadly on them than they are on the uh, unique mobs who just have simple minions. Because some of the abilities don't get transferred onto the minions at all. So as you see there, when we reached a new level, not only do we get our spirit, our primary resource, and our health recharged, we also get a little bit of a damage nova. So in hardcore play, it's important to use that to your advantage. Don't level up willy-nilly if you can help it. Save your level ups for when you're going to be in a dense pack of enemies to clear them out for you. It saves you a lot of trouble. So you can see we have a new ability now. It's going to be helpful with these crowds. And you can see with just these regular enemies, even when we're surrounded, it's not that big of a deal. But as you saw, it took a little bit of time to deal with that blue pack, and uh, we ran a little bit low on health from time to time. So we do have to be careful. This is not going to be easy peasy. All right, skeletons. We have to watch out for things like this in hardcore mode, these um, dark berserkers, because that wind-up attack they have does a lot of damage. And if you aren't conscious of how the difficulty level has been progressing, how the monster level has gone up, that can kill you in one shot, or at least put you in a position to be finished off by the other people around you. So don't just stand there. And they will change the direction of that attack after they start it. So you just need to stay out of their range, basically. So you can see I'm running low on health. You have to be conscious and use your um, health, your, your potions, carefully. Uh, don't wait until the last minute, but also don't use them as soon as you start losing health. All right. So that turned out fine. We're going up levels. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get to the Chamber of Suffering, we're going to kill the Butcher, and that will be the end of this first video. Uh, before, obviously, we go and deal with the Butcher, we'll, we'll gear up with anything that is useful that I picked up, which won't be much, and we'll uh, make sure that our abilities are in order. Now, with the Monk, I tend to favor uh, the two one-handed weapon builds. I generally tend to favor those wherever they exist. Uh, now, it may not be the best overall, but I really like attack speed. I don't like slow attacks. I like to have builds where there are a lot of sort of um, proc on attack sort of effects, and so attack speed is very important to me. We heard a treasure goblin somewhere around. We'll find him. Treasure goblins can, of course, be incredibly dangerous to your health in any game. But in hardcore, remember, since when you die, you are really most sincerely dead, you have to be extra careful. It's not worth ending your playthrough for the treasure. So these uh, zombies, we do need to worry about a little bit. Um, actually, no, it's the the uh, bigger zombies that turn into crawlers sometimes when you kill them that are really bad news because they do a lot of damage and they tend to be in large groups. All right, so we got through that just fine. We killed that treasure goblin. You're not going to expect much in the way of good drops so early in the game, so it's extra not worth it to deal with the treasure goblins if it's going to put you in danger of death. Again, my health is getting towards half, so I'm going to use a health potion there. You can see getting surrounded can be a little bit bad. I mean, it's not that it's good in normal mode, it's just that, you know, if you're dead, it's no big deal in soft core. You can just come back. The worst thing that happens is you have to repair your gear. So that's one good thing about hardcore mode is that you will have lower repair bills because, well, you can't, well, you can die. It's just that your equipment is not going to be repairable after you're dead because you're just dead. You can see I cut it a little bit close there, but since I was just dealing with ordinary skeletons, I was not too worried about it. Okay, 
Here is a big bunch of people. We're going to use our blind. We're going to use our um, potion. We're going to back up. So you need to be more tactically aware in hardcore mode. Uh, if there are choke points, use them to your advantage. Tactical retreats are going to be a must because you can't just sit in the middle of things. This is going to cause some problems sometimes when you're dealing with summoning enemies because they may just keep summoning because you can't get to their back line. And they're just going to keep creating things. You can try and lure them out. Uh, when the monk comes into her own, we will be able to do things like move straight back to them. And not worry about their minions until after we've taken care of the summoners. So, uh, I would be well advised to actually put on some of the gear I've picked up. Uh, that would make things a little bit easier for me, and I wouldn't need to worry. Uh, but, I'm just trying to get through this first bounty here. Um, if it ends up costing me my life, you can all say, uh, you told yourself so in the comments. And I'm sure you are all thinking it as well. So, you can also tell me that you told me so. But, life sucks, and then you die, especially in Diablo 3. So I want to keep away, as I said, from these Dark Berserkers' wind-up slam attack. Because it can really do you in fast. Alright, we are approaching the Chamber of Suffering. Fear not. The Chamber of Suffering sounds like... One of the things we might call our recording studio once Bleak House goes live. Not necessarily our suffering, perhaps yours. Uh, one of the uh, content ideas that Flop and I have kicked around for the Bleak House channel, uh, collaborative channel, is sometime we get the viewers to choose uh, a game that is really hard or that they know we don't like and make us play it. A sort of schadenfreude stream where you get to watch us suffer. That might be fun for you. All right, let's put on some gear. Um, we're not gonna have much in the way of choice. Plus two life per hit. Oh no, plus three life per hit. Um, plus three life after each kill. We're gonna go with a defensive build here um, as much as we can. We're just going to put some stuff on to maximize our chances. We'll even put on random garbage. Um, so this actually does way more damage than the magical sword. Uh, so we're actually going to go for that. All right, this is as prepared as we're going to be. You can see, you know, we have a little bit of choice here. Um, I'm going to stick with Fists of Thunder for the time being. Uh, Tempest Rush might be a better idea uh, here as a mobility thing against the Butcher. And that's all that we have in the way of abilities to choose. So this is how we're going to go in. Let's hope that this doesn't end our run immediately. Hello, ugly dude. So that little jump is a sign that he's going about to do a powerful attack. Uh, his animations are pretty, uh, they telegraph what he's going to do to a large extent. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about getting surprised by the Butcher. Um, it might have actually been better on second thought to do the lashing kick. But, you know, we'll deal with it. So you can use blind once you see him start an attack animation to knock him out of it, since you don't have to worry about it. So it may be good to save your blinds and not just use them whenever the cooldown comes off. Of course, I did not take my own advice there. Um, I'm not going for any of the uh, boss achievements here, like not standing in the fire at all. I believe that I already have all those. Those uh, are not necessarily seasonal achievements, those are general achievements, 
Um, we do need to worry about getting him killed in a decent amount of time, because uh, he does have a rage timer, I believe, and things get really bad. I believe the floor is constantly on fire when his rage timer uh, goes. That is something we definitely want to avoid. We are not doing a great deal of damage here, as you can see. Um, so this is going to take us a little bit of time. But again, this is the fun of the hardcore playthrough. No risk, no reward. Oh, oh bad news. So, we are going to run into the Enrage timer, I am almost certain, because we have not even gotten half of his health down here. Oh, that did not work. Whew. We're just outside of that hook's range. Oh, we had a little uh, rubber banding there or something. I don't have enough spirit. Nope, nope. So one thing you also have to worry about is when you can't see him, that hook can take you by surprise because you won't see the wind-up animation for it. So uh, when you're running away because of the flames on the ground, be very wary. So as you all probably know, you can make him run into the wall, damage himself slightly, and also stun himself for a little bit when he does that charge, as long as he doesn't hit you. So we're getting him down a bit here. Uh, we're getting caught in the fire. You can see the fire's not doing that much damage to us, so it's not a huge problem. So you don't entirely have to rely on visual cues for uh, avoiding his hook. He makes noises too. You can see I sort of heard that hook coming even though I could not see him. So we're, we're running him down. I think we're going to be okay here. But you can see that um, things can be a bit tough because you have to play much more conservatively. Alright, so we got it done. Um, you're not going to get good drops, even from bosses, even from diabolic hordes at this level, but rare items are good to get. Alright, so we're going to end this first video here, and next time we will pick up with some more bounties. I'm not going to show you every bit of gameplay I do with this character. I'm going to show you some highlights when I get to new uh, ability tiers, maybe. Um, so if my level is higher the next time you see this, don't fret too much. Uh, I don't plan on showing you every last second of Nietzsche's rise. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I don't care what you do.